there is barakah when we share things. When you cook for one person, you, it is costly. But when 20 people are eating together, what happens? It averages out. Far less. And guess what? I want to tell you something else. We spoke about Jolof so many times and people started fighting with me. When I was in Ghana, they asked me, favorite food. I said to my brother, don't put me in a corner. Yesterday, I met the volunteers. They said, we, each one of us said our name and favorite food. I said, are you, are you hinting at Jolof? But the point I want to raise, do you know, Wallahi al-Azim, I've taken an oath because it's my experience. From my experience, when you want your food to be tastier, it needs to be in a larger quantity. Have you ever thought of that? You cook a small amount, it's not going to taste as nice as it tastes when there's a big pot. Am I right or wrong? Let's talk of jollof. So now I can change it and say the best jollof is that which is cooked in the biggest pot. Allahu Akbar. In the fire outside, when that little scent of the nice burning wood comes slightly into that rice, then you call it jollof. Now you know. May Allah bless you. Why am I saying this? Because it's an example of barakah. Barakah comes when you care for everyone. I eat myself. You are not going to get that scent which you need. When you cook together, when, they, when there are weddings, go to the jollof there and see how it tastes. It tastes different from when it is cooked for one person. The same applies when you are worried about yourself, yourself, and just me and my earnings. Wallahi, I tell you, you might have and you will get because it's your sustenance. The minute you include others, Allah needs to give you to give them. If you have promised, I'm pledging for these orphans a million, Allah needs to give you that million because it was written for the orphans and it had to come through you. We don't understand that you need to be a Muslim and a mu'min and a firm believer in Allah to understand that. That is Allah. Every time Allah speaks about tijara in the Quran, it's never about worldly business. Tijara means business, isn't it? Allah says, Hal adunnukum ala tijara. Should I show you a business? That's what Allah says in the Quran. We're talking about business, isn't it? Let's look at the Quran. Where is the word used? It's used. Should I teach you or should I tell you about business? That's number one. Number two is. Allah mentions certain qualities and he says those people, they are engaged in a business that will never fail. What business? Imagine, I want to know what business is it? Allah is saying a business. Well, you know what is that business? It's a deal. Who wants the deal? Who is ready for the deal mentioned in the Quran? Wallahi, it is a deal you strike with Allah. Allah says, you want to strike a deal? Come strike a deal with me. About what? About Jannah. You want to build it? Here, let me show you. Come, let's do business. You do, I do. You try, I will give you. You try, I will give you. Because we are human. Our salah and our charities and all of that, sometimes in intention and quality, it is lacking. Allah says, I will give you. Don't worry. You just do and try and keep going and humble yourself and correct yourself and seek forgiveness every time you falter because I created you a human being. I didn't expect perfection from you. I only expected a trial. Did you try? Yes, I did. Were you humble? Yes, I was. Did you reach out to others? Yes, I did. Did you believe in the last day? Did you believe in the prophets, the angels? Did you worship me alone? Yes, I did. Well, here is Jannah for you. These are the, these are the real deals. Because while I am earning in this world, and I'll give you another example as well, I might die before I see the fruits of an investment I have made. But in the eyes of Allah, your investments you've made, they will never die. In fact, if you die, you actually see the returns of it. There we go. Imagine someone promises you, listen, here's a deal. It will mature in two, two months. We are going to turn it around. We're talking of halal, obviously, right? And before that, you have passed away. What happens to all of that money? What happens to everything? Either they might cheat, steal, or if they were upright, they might give it to your family and they may fight over it, especially if the amounts are large. May Allah Almighty grant us all goodness and success. So that deal is not as confirmed as the deal with Allah. Allah says, Lan tabur. you can never go wrong with us. Never. Let's deal with Allah. So if you look at the verses, Allah speaks about riba. Riba is usually an interest which you and I know as Muslims, we know it necessarily that is haram. 
Now, haram and there is a lot of detail because sometimes we are living in an environment where there is no way out of certain things. So how to get it out of your system, that also is a contemporary discussion of the scholars. And they will tell you, look, if it happens to come and you happen to have had a deal where X, Y, and Z has happened, you need to do A, B, and C in order to get yourself out of this. That is a discussion on its own. But let's go to the verse. Let's look at what Allah says about riba. Allah says it clearly. If you are true believers, then fear Allah and quit the interest, the usury, the riba. Don't involve in it. Stop it. That's what Allah says. And what does Allah say? Now, remember, riba, what is riba? I am investing. I want back something, but it's an unethical, immoral deal. That's riba. Allah tells you in the same verse where he says, Yamhaqullahu riba. Immediately after that, he says, Wayurbi, Wayurbi. Yamhaqullahu riba means Allah will extinguish. Allah will cause to be destroyed that which is filled with usury. It cannot come with blessings and it will not last long and it will bring about problems and issues in your life and it will bring about negativity and so on and we will cancel it, delete it, deplete it and you are left almost suicidal in a lot of cases. You know of people who in other countries where they don't even believe in all of this and they just do as they please. Many times they tend to purchase something which they will have to be paying back for the next 30 years without having thought that next year I might lose my job and it's only been one year since the beginning of the payment. Yet I had a brilliant job. What happened during COVID, so many people lost their jobs. If you look at the amount of suicides of people living in Western countries simply because they lost the job, they lost the things, they lost their houses, they lost their cars, they lost their furniture, they lost their accessories, they lost everything. Their whole life was sitting on credit, the whole life. That's why I love to come to Africa. When I tell people, you see that car, you see those cars, they own them. You know what that means? When you go to the Western world, you see a car, they don't own it. They're just paying slowly. Come to Africa, the bulk of it, I'm talking about my own country in Zimbabwe. You see the cars on the road, they own them. What that means is we are not paying monthly, these are our cars. We are living happily than those who are paying for a fancy looking vehicle for the next oh, so many years. May Allah Almighty grant us contentment. Do not be, listen very carefully. Do not be ashamed to live or to downgrade your life to the position that Allah has kept it. He will give you an upgrade very soon. You cannot start flying first class and it's your first time flying in a plane. No chance. You will, not, you will start with economy. In fact, you start going by bus. Then you go by train. Then you go by plane. Then you might be upgraded to business class. First, you don't buy. What happens? You earn miles and you are smart enough to just upgrade. That's it. Unless really you are, you are a, a very important person who requires that peace of mind and so on. It's a different story. But after that, what happens? Allah upgrades you to a private jet. Those Gulf streams you are thinking about, they are close at reach. Inshallah, they are coming. Inshallah. I didn't hear anyone saying Amin. Amen. Hey, Mashallah, that was good. You know why? If you say Amin, let me tell you, it might be out of your reach. But Inshallah, Allah will give you something else. We will fly to Jannah, Inshallah. What do you say? But my brothers and sisters, Allah says Allah will extinguish riba, that which is unethical in business. He will cause it to be destroyed. Wayurbi, and he will cause growth for what? As sadaqat. He didn't say business. He said, he, look how Allah words it. Allah says, I will destroy interest and usury and I will cause to grow the charities. Allahu Akbar. Where, where do you talk about business, Ya Allah? You didn't. The business is the charity. When you want to earn, you need to bear in mind, Oh Allah, give me barakah so that I can give my two and a half percent and more. Allah says, we will bless you with a ton. Give, we will give you. Anfiq ya ibn Adama unfiq alayk. One of my favorite narrations of Hadith Qudsi. Spend, O oh son of Adam, I will spend on you. Give, I will give you. Give, I will give you. See, wallahi, I tell you in my life, and I'm sure many of you, I gave a bottle of perfume, I got two. I gave something, I got this. So much so that when I want something, I give. Wallahi, I'm serious. When I want something, I give. And that's why the hadith says the best charity you can ever give is that which you are giving someone in need. When you yourself are in need, you are fearing poverty and yet you are giving. 
Allah says, I watched it, I saw it, don't worry. O son of Adam, if your intention was right, everything was good, wait and see what we do for you. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless us. This is business. This is the real deal. Be straightforward. Be ethical. Be filled with the highest of morals and values when you are dealing. It might cause you discomfort a little bit because there is a trend around us of just making money by hook or crook. We will neither be crooks nor will we use hooks. We are going to deal in the name of Allah. Allah has mercy upon a man or a person, male or female, but Allah has mercy on a person who is conscious, considerate of the buyer when selling and considerate of the seller when buying. I have a good deal. You went, you are happy, I went, I'm happy. Not that I squeeze you and squeeze you and squeeze you. Do you know to give someone profit is also an ibadah. Say a man comes to you selling something and you are relatively wealthy. And he says, look, I'm selling this at a thousand naira each. And you tell him, what is your cost? Wallahi, in Islam, you don't need to ask what is your cost. He doesn't need to tell you. He's not obliged to let you know. Because if he lets you know, you might be shocked. It could have just been 50 nairas. You see? But in essence... If a man comes to you and tells you, look, I'm selling this at a thousand, it's good to, to haggle. Haggling is good. You say, no, give us at 900. If he says, no problem, I give you at 900. You say, you, you came down so quickly, so now you go to 800. Well, if I knew that was the case, I would have told you, no, 999. You see, when I go back at home, when we go to purchase some stuff, you, and you, uh, we know the market value of certain things, like sometimes we purchase some cows and so on from the villages. And you ask him, how much is this? He looks at you, looks at your car. He looks at it and he says, ah, come on. He looks at everything. Then he says, $1,000. So now you look at him and say, I'll pay you 200 What? 200 No, just give me 300 It's okay. So you know how to deal. So dealing is a good thing. But you deal in a way that neither are you ripping someone nor are you squeezing them. You are happy. My deal was, it was okay. It was a good deal. I gave him a bit. You know why? He has a family, he has, he has children, he needs to feed, he has parents, he has commitments, he needs to bring for his house. At least I gave him a deal. When you can think of that in when you, while you are dealing more than only yourself, then you are a true believer. Then you are a true believer. We had a good deal. What happened? I, I gave, he gave. Inshallah, he will go home, he'll buy food for his family, he'll be a happy man. There it goes. A shrewd businessman. We say this man is very shrewd. What is it? In Islam, the goodness of a businessman or a businesswoman is when they are considerate, they are sharp, they know their duty to Allah, they know how to deal in the world, and they know yawmun laka wa yawmun alayk. A day will be for you and a day against you. The day I lose, I thank Allah. The day I win, I thank Allah. Both of those days I am humble because I know when I have gotten something, Allah can take it away now. And when I have nothing, I know Allah can give me right now. That is my relation with Allah.